So this will be interesting to see how they treat him. Here we go, everybody's ready. And Patterson wins the draw. Jacob Wood, who is probably one of the most talented defensemen on St. Louis Park. And he gets it in the corner. Works with Jeff Howes. Gunnar Knutson tries to keep it in the zone. And Patterson brings it in. Patterson's a good looking skater, isn't he? One of the best looking skaters yeah, out there. He, he does a real, he's really smooth. I always like watching Bohr as well, 23. He just seems like he can fly. Him and, and Patterson both have wheels on him. They really do. And and, look, it's really nice. And great hands and a great shot. Yep. What more can you ask for as a coach? Nothing. The second line for both. Everybody's up. The defense did not switch for Benilde, though. But that was a pretty short shift for defensemen. So. It was, you're right. Yep. They, don't, they don't necessarily need to switch. And the second line of Benil is very talented as well. Battling out in the corner. Here goes Christian Horn and John Duda. Oh, no, no good. No goal. <laughs> Look good for a minute, though. Look good for a minute. The puck in the back of the net. <laughs> If you can't throw it, can you? Let's watch the play again. Christian oh, there's Horn. The shot. Rebound goes in the air. <laughs> Duda did not have time to set it down and whack it in. <laughs> Something to expect out of John Duda. <laughs> Here we have the top line of defense out there for Benilde now. And there's 23, Pat Bohr. Now, Pat Steinhauser, number nine on Benilla, is injured tonight, so there's been a switch up in the lines between first and second. Normally, he's on second line, but he separated his shoulder last game. You're kidding me. Nope. So Is, is that his season? No. He should be back uh, two weeks. Really? Yeah, Chase Molnarik separated his as well. You're kidding me. So, John Duda got moved up to second line to play with his brother, Pat Duda. I remember in one of the earlier games when you were announcing the game, and it was the Duda to Duda was the goal, oh. goal and the assist. Duda to Duda. That's what Benil looks for between them. Yep. And Dan Pepperton actually got moved up to third line. Oh, oh. look at that. Right back up goal. and over. Unbelievable. Beautiful backhand shot over the glove. Let's, let's, let's watch the replay and see, it, see what it looks like. What do you think got the goal? I'm thinking... Pat Crone. Pat number Crone. 17. All right, here we go. Great hustle by number 11, Tranny. Right up and over him. Yep, Crone got it. Nice, nice, Gave nice. Gave him that corner. Got the starting lineup for Benilde out there, but the defense are now Jake Horton, who's a freshman at Benilde, transferred from Wyzetta. And also Patrick Davis, a sophomore, so two young D out there. But this is the kind of game you have to get the, def the, the young players in, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Especially after taking a 1-0 to zero lead like, a couple minutes into the game. It's, you, you have to get all three lines in. Oh, Mickey Hill stops Will Nelson's shot. I've got on officially so far three shots on goal for the uh, Red Knights and one for the Orioles. Who knows? 14-40 on the clock, first period. Patterson comes up with the draw. Oh, Nelson with a beautiful move. That's it. Oh, oh. almost the exact same play right up and over his shoulder. Remember in the Edina game uh, we had a couple weeks ago with Nelson and, and the uh, Edina Where defense flipped. flipped him? Yep. Oh, my Lord. The ice shook hit. and the, state, and the uh, ice arena and the rec center shook. You know, it was actually made into a YouTube video. It sure wasn't really. Yeah. <laughs> it's on YouTube. With us commentating as well. All right. <laughs> it's the best video out there. Uh, so if my grandma had a, had a computer that she knew how to turn on, we'd be, <laughs> I, I could tell her what to, what to watch, huh? <laughs> exactly. She was commentating. <laughs> oh, what in the, the world happened there? He lost his helmet. I don't helmet. think the puck hit his helmet. Look at that. It'll be interesting to see if there's a replay on that one. How in the world did that happen? 
So he's standing there without without his helmet on. Their it looks like he's fixing the strap. But there's then. Nelson. Nelson's got a hard shot. That could, could it, it go? Just, yeah, it just fell just off. It looks like it fell off, and yep. he's tightening the straps now. So. Yeah, yeah. Just a loose helmet. That's scary for a goalie to lose his helmet <laughs> right in the middle of play. <laughs> Especially, Especially with Nelson. Also with Will Nelson. <laughs> yeah. Coming down on you. You want to have your helmet on. Uh, 14.05 left in the first period. And it looks like we'll take the goalies back to action. Here we go. Tattoo to taking the face off and wins it. Nice shot by Sam. Keep it, keep it low. Almost snuck, snuck it in underneath Sam, Sam Anderson. I think Benil's won every face-off so far. It sure, has, sure seems like it, doesn't it? There and there's another one for Benil. Anderson. Oh, look at this. Icing. Looks like it. Yep. Now, Mike, am I mistaken, or did they change the icing rule in pros where um, lots of times the high school kids and college kids ice so they can exchange lines, but it's my understanding that the pros... It, with an icing cannot change the line? Is that true or not true, or don't you know? I, I don't believe that's true, but I do know that at an icing, it's a race to the puck. Rather than high school, the whistle's blowing right away. Yeah. So if the opposing team ices it down the ice, if they win the race to the puck, then it's no icing. Really? Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, it makes sense in high school to have icing uh, yeah. the, way, the way the rule stands so right now. So they're not cheating their way out exactly of the game right. if they're up or anything. Right. Exactly right. And we have Pat Bohr and Jake Horton, a senior and freshman, working together on D. That's always an interesting combo. But Coach Paul is doing the right thing because we're moving into the time of the season when we want to make everybody make sure everybody's playing the right. game. In case you're moving the section, Absolutely someone gives her, right. we want to have them all the experience. Absolutely. Watch Bohr skate. Unbelievable. 23. Watch he has great skate. vision of the ice, too. He can make perfect passes. I think I read in the paper that he signed or he gave a verbal commitment for uh, Nebraska Omaha. Oh yeah, for the juniors. Uh, I I thought I thought it was for the university. But oh you're really? Thinking for juniors. Huh? Could, it well, could. I know he was looking at a junior team, and that's what Benil wanted to do by laying the body right away. Yep. Yeah, Pat Bohr is bound to go D1. You would think. Yep. You would think. He has enough junior teams that want him. He has enough D1 teams looking at him. Yep. Same with Patterson. Yep. And possibly Nelson, too. I wouldn't be surprised if... Well, is Nelson. Nelson a junior? Nelson or? is a junior. And Patterson's a junior. Yep. So, we still have them for next year. Oh, oh this, this might be it, huh? Oh, boy. Now, number eight, Dan Pepperton. Oh! Oh, no! What a goal by Sam Anderson. Unbelievable from his knees. Let's see if we have the replay on that. That was an unbelievable shot. Both shots have come in real high. I don't know if they're shooting high on purpose. Here we go. No, let's see if we can get Anderson, Anderson right and there. Look tripped. at that. Yes. It's tripped right as he shoots. You know, I bet that is their game plan to go high because this goalie is known to go down well, it, it, a little it, early. And both of both them have, have been that way. So 12:39 left in the first period, two to zip. Pat four to break it out. Number eight, Dan Pepperton is actually playing defense for JV. Not too many games ago, and now he's center for third line varsity, so you can't beat that. Can't beat that. And he's a sophomore. He is a sophomore. What a, Very what a, talented What a sophomore. valuable experience. Yep. Good for him. Coaches love a versatile player. Absolutely. He can move around like that. Absolutely. I'm always astonished when I watch Brian Glenn, number 18. He is so huge and so powerful. Oh. I guess I always pictured the a defense. But oh, I know. He's just a power forward. Power, power, power. Let's see what we got here. Here he comes on the ice. He's a power forward that every team needs, though. Yep. One that can just power through and take that hard shot. <laughs> what do we got here? Just offsides. Offsides. Not waved off. Yep. Forward.